Whew. Man, that's tough trying to get through that. That's a large part of what defeated the British and helped the America become a free country. Swamps and thickets. They weren't used to this kind of terrain over there. And they came over here and it kicked their butt because they were trying to lug their cannons and everything through that stuff. There's no way. Not gonna happen. You can't even hardly walk through it. But I bet you that's where a buck bed's down because there's that other little cut of water that comes in. There's a cut of water that goes that way and the river comes this way. So he would be surrounded on three sides by water. He has three different ways he can escape. Plus he's got this big old field and he's got oak woods right there. So food source, does, everything's real close by. Plus it's real thick. That buck knows there ain't nothing gonna sneak up on him because it's gonna make way too much noise trying to get in there. This is becoming a challenge, just walking through this field. As you can see what it's like. This grass is all laid down. It's coming well up past my knees. And any time it gets up past your knees, no matter what it is, it becomes really tough getting through it. Whether it's snow or grass or bushes or whatever. It just drags on your feet. Plus it's really uneven ground, so you're constantly losing your footing. Get my way back over to this deer trail. I might have an easier time. There. Well, this ain't much of a deer trail here. That's better than what I had. Man, that wore me out getting back through that field. That's a good example of how it pays to uh, stick to those uh, game trails when you're out hiking. You know, if you're hiking off trail, try and find the game trails and walk on those because they'll generally lead you in the right direction, which in that case was a shallow point in the river to cross. And it'll be a lot easier walking because coming back, I didn't follow that game trail because I cut over because I wanted to see what that other section was and uh, getting back out of that stuff was a bear. I'm beat and I'm not completely worn out, but I definitely worked up a sweat. But now I'm back, back in the swamp, find that game trail and get back up in the open woods. There's an old deer rub right there. That's probably a good few years old. It's already starting to heal over. But you can see it was wore right down to the inner wood. That little maple's starting to heal back over now. There's probably more all the way down through here. And there'll probably be some fresh ones when it gets close to rutting season. Now we don't, I'm sure we have some here, but we don't really have quicksand in Michigan. At least not that I've ever seen. And I've been all over Michigan. Uh, but we do get like kind of like a peat bog where there will you'll get in a swamp and it'll look like ground it'll have little trees and shrubs and everything growing on top of it but as you walk across it it'll start waving almost like the water and it's because it's just a thin layer of roots and 
soil that have built up and are actually floating on the surface of peat and water and muck and that can be well over your head so you don't want to fall in that because you will not get out it'll be just as bad as quicksand or worse and uh, that's another good reason to stick to the game trails when you're going through a swamp because they're not going to cross stuff like that you know deer muskrats and stuff will because they're light enough they can walk right across it but a deer's hoof is so small that it'll poke right through that peat and they won't cross through that stuff so if you stick to the game trails number one you're going to save calories and it's just going to be a lot easier walking and more enjoyable and number two uh, it'll be safer because those deer they kind of know uh, not where to step plus <clears throat> you'll find a lot more wild edibles if you stick to the game trails because that's generally what they are is they're browse trails where the deer go through and they eat stuff along the way so it's likely you'll find stuff like wild raisins and nanny berries and such and you'll spot a lot more game that way too it's kind of it's kind of funny you know uh, the average person probably doesn't think about it but when you look at a, a big swamp or a woods you think the animals just run around everywhere at least that's what i used to think and it's just not the case they have highways and roads and sidewalks just like humans they're just a little a little bit trickier to spot But if you're a hunter, you know, you, you got to know that stuff because you'll be walking around in open woods and you'll never see nothing. You'll starve to death or, you know, you'll never get no food. But uh, if you stick to those game trails, you'll see stuff. Yeah, see right here, I'm about... Mm, maybe 50 yards from the edge of the woods in all directions and uh, got the swamp behind me and here's the bedding area there's been quite a few deer bedded down in here and it looks like they've been bedding down here for quite a while anytime you come out and you see the grass all matted down you know that's a bedding area that's where the deer come and they hang out. I mean, this is a good spot because, as you can see, the sun is in the western sky and it's still shining through on this spot. So they're going to get sun right up into the late evening. And it's got quite a bit of southern exposure as well, so they'll get sun throughout the day. So this would be a good wintertime bedding area. And it looks like they're using it right now, even. And in case you're wondering, not only would that be a, a good way to find a deer's bedding area, but that's also a good way to find shelter. I mean, if it's shelter for the deer, it's shelter for you. Obviously, if that was filled up with two feet of water, it wouldn't be very good for you, but you could always build an elevated bed. If it was in the middle of summer, it probably wouldn't be the best bet for a person because there'd be a ton of mosquitoes. In the summer, I'd want to find a ridge myself because I'd have breeze, which would help cool me off. And also, I would have, uh, it, that breeze would help keep the bugs down. I notice every time I get up on top of an oak ridge, there's hardly any mosquitoes. There's one on my hand right now because there's always a breeze and it's generally drier too. So. This isn't meant to like show off or anything, but just to give you an idea of how you can, how accurately you can navigate without a compass. Just by paying attention to landmarks and the sun and everything else. 
Now I went all through that swamp, circled all around and came out. When I came out of that swamp, I came out at the same point I went in, just because I paid attention to my surroundings. But this here tree, this is a blue beech, and I passed right by it. Now this is way up in the woods. I'm already way out of the swamp. But I passed right by this blue beech on the way in. So I know I'm taking the same exact trail out even though there's no trail here, it's just open woods. Trees and shrubs and stuff everywhere. And the way I do that, which I've already showed this in another video, but when you walk through the woods, you want to maintain a straight line. You go to the left of one tree and to the right of another tree. Go to the left of that shrub. And here I would go to the right of this cherry, but I got this big oak in the way, so I'll just go around it. But I'm moving off to the left, and I need to keep that in mind. And as soon as I get a chance, I need to make that back up by moving, you know, five steps or whatever off to the right again. And once I do that, I just start that weaving back and forth between the trees. Go around one to the left, go around one to the right. Go around one to the left, go around one to the right. And, you know, I find myself right back at that spot I showed you before as I was coming in, which was that, uh, well, probably, this is probably a deer scrape later in the season. That's what it looks like. But it's uh, all washed out from the whole year. But you can see I'm headed right down that same little deer run. Now I've made it back to the deer run and I can just keep maintaining my bearing. Keep that sun just on the very back side of my left shoulder and I know I'm headed north. And if it turned dark, well the moon's going to rise up just like the sun does. The moon, the moon will rise in the east. And it'll follow, you know, roughly the same pattern as the sun, and it'll set in the west. Now, some days the moon will rise in the daytime, but this time of year, because I pay attention, I know that the moon is going to rise just after sunset. So if it gets dark, I can use the moon to navigate, just like I would use the sun. And if it gets cloudy, and I can't tell where the moon or sun is, and I just have to rely on my ability to maintain my bearing by weaving back and forth between these trees. And you can do that at night just as easily. You can get a better feel for it at night, actually, because you can't see that far in front of you and you have to rely on it. But you don't want to get yourself out in the middle of nowhere and try it for the first time.